registration. We've installed roles and features locally on a machine using graphical tools like the add roles and features wizard. We've used PowerShell to install roles and features remotely on a machine. And while PowerShell is great and it's repeatable because we can just rerun that script, the problem is it's a one-time thing. For example, let's say our web developers came to us and said, hey, we need a farm of web servers. And we're like, no problem. So we spin up three web servers, right? And we put IIS on all of these machines and we configure it according to our environment and our company standards. And we get them all into this beautiful initial state. And then we release it to the wild. And that's the last time they will ever see that initial state because our web developers will be doing things on these machines. They may need to fight fires and implement band-aids and change configurations. We may need to do that as well. So each one of these machines could drift off into their own state. That's known as configuration drift. And just to take a step back for a moment, when we were standing up each one of these machines, how did we do it? Well, if we were GUI people, we probably got onto each one of these machines individually to install IIS and then configure its settings. Or if we were a PowerShell wizard, we made a PowerShell script, right? And we sent that script over to all those machines. In either case though, it was a one-time shot. Desired state configuration takes this all to the next level, does it all for us, and ensures that it stays that way. So what we do is we create what's known as a DSC configuration. Just think of it as a PowerShell script, essentially a fancy PowerShell script. It's code as configuration. We declaratively define what the state of these machines look like. So we want IIS installed. We want these settings in IIS. We want this service running with a startup type of automatic. We want this registry setting. So we define all of that in this one script, and then we push it out to those machines. If anybody were to stop that service or uninstall IIS, DSC would just put it back in that initial state. It allows us to separate configuration from implementation, right? We don't need to get onto these machines to perform a one-time configuration or even send a PowerShell script over them. We've defined them all in one centralized location, which also gives us the benefit of standardization and prevents configuration drift. DSC is also item potent. What that means is when our configuration is applied or reapplied to a machine, it's only going to change what isn't in the desired state. And that makes it very safe and efficient, especially if we need to change our configurations over time. Maybe we need to add more things into it, modify things. Again, when that gets applied, it's not gonna reapply the entire configuration, just those things that aren't in the desired state. So the bottom line is that DSC gives us the power to manage our infrastructure at scale. Server herding, as we call that, right? Scruffy looking server herders. Let's go over the components of DSC. Here we have a very simple DSC script that will ensure that the IIS server role is present on a machine. If it's not, it will install it. The first block here is the configuration itself. Think of a configuration as a PowerShell function. We can even parameterize it so we can make this more dynamic. I'll show you how we can do that when we get into the virtual lab. Inside of a configuration, we have resource blocks. These are the actual configurable pieces. So we can do things like use the Windows feature resource block to install features. We have all kinds of resources out there for working with the operating system, for working with software, server roles, features, the file system, you name it. You can also download resources for many things that aren't built in to DSC as well as build your own. Now, once we're done defining all of our resources and their state, now we need to compile this configuration. So we use a little PowerShell here to call that configuration by name, specify the machines that we wanna generate this configuration for in an output path, and it's gonna generate an MOF file in here for each machine that you pass in. MOF is a managed object framework file. Just think of it as the deliverable that gets sent over to the machines that we wanna configure. So here we would have a web-nug.mof file inside of that directory. And this is where the final client side component comes into play. It's known as the LCM, the Local Configuration Manager. LCM is a component that gets installed with PowerShell, so it's already running on all of our machines. And by the way, we use a DSC configuration to configure the properties of the LCM. I'll walk you through that in the virtual lab as well. Now there's two ways that we can deploy these configurations to our target machines. One way and the default here is the push method. This is manual and it's very simple. We use the start DSC configuration commandlet, pass it to path to where those MOF files are. And for each machine that has an MOF file, it will push it out to those machines and the LCM will then apply it. Another way to do it is setting up a pull server. This is a centralized location where we store our MOF files. We can use IIS or an SMB file share, and then we can configure the LCM to point to that server. It'll actually create a scheduled task, and then every X number of minutes, it will pull this server to pull down those MOF files and apply that configuration. 
a very cool and highly efficient way of deploying our DSC configurations. We don't have to worry about the client side at all or this manual process of pushing them out. We can just focus on our configurations and deploying them to that central location. The LCM will take care of the rest. And those are the basics of desired state configuration. Let's jump into the virtual lab and see it in action. We're gonna take all of those manual configurations that we performed in a previous nugget and apply them automatically using DSC. So we have a server core machine down here named WebNug. Right now, this is a bare bones machine, nothing on it. It simply has a name and it was joined to the domain. So our goal is to get IIS on it, get the management service on it, put our registry tweak in there so we can remotely manage it from DCNUG and our GUI tools. We're not even gonna touch this machine. It's all gonna happen through DSC. So let's begin here by logging on to DCNUG. Once the desktop loads up, let's head down here to the taskbar and launch File Explorer. Inside here, we're gonna to go to this PC, into the C drive, into the Nugget Lab directory, where we have a script here called ps-commands.ps1. Give that a right click and choose edit to launch this script right in to the ISC. So you can see our configuration is a little more complex than what we just saw in the whiteboard. Let's break it down. We start off with the configuration keyword and we pass in a name. Again, we need this name because once we're done defining it, we need to call it to compile it into an MOF file. We're also using a parameter block. So again, we can use parameters to make this more dynamic. In this case, we're gonna specify a computer name parameter, which is a string array. So we can just pass in a common delimited list of computer names and we can just call this then once, passing in all those computer names and it will generate an MOF file for each one that we pass in. If we don't pass any in, it'll default to the local machine. Next up, we define a node block and we pass in this parameter. That way, again, it will get generated for each computer name that is passed in here. And then comes all of our resource blocks. The first thing we're gonna do here is define a Windows feature, IS. Here's the actual system name here, web server, and we want to ensure that it is present. We also need another feature, and that is the web MGMT service. Remember, we need this over on our server core machine so we can manage it remotely. Also notice here that we have a depends on property. This is how we can create dependency, and we're referencing our previous feature, meaning this must already exist before this kicks off. So we can use this to provide dependencies and order of how these configurations are applied on target machines. Next up, we're gonna modify the registry. Recall back in our managed server core nugget, in order to remotely manage an IIS machine using graphical utilities, we need to flip the switch here for the enable remote management value. So here we have a registry resource. We give it a name again, that way we can reference it if we have anything that's going to depend on it. We specify the key, the value, its data type, as well as the actual value. And also this is gonna depend on both our IIS resource block as well as our IIS management resource block. So both of these need to be in place before that registry setting is configured. Finally, we're gonna configure a service. So we're gonna use the service resource block to reference the web management service, specify its name, we want the startup type to be automatic and we want the state to be running. So DSC will ensure that all of that happens and stays that way. That way we'll be able to remotely manage our web server. All right, so that is our configuration. Now what we need to do is get this entire thing in memory. So highlight the whole thing, hit F8 on your keyboard or choose this button right here, run selection. That will place the entire thing in memory. I'm gonna go split screen here for a moment and scroll down because the next thing we need to do is create the MOF. So we're gonna run that configuration by name since it's in memory, uh, PowerShell will see it. We're gonna specify our machine name here as WebNug. So it's gonna generate a web-nug.mof. And that way when we push the configuration, it will push that out to the WebNug machine. So place your cursor on that line, hit execute, and just give it a second and it should generate the MOF file. And that's that, there it is, web-nug.mof. If you open up File Explorer here, there it is. And you can open that up in a text file and take a peek at it as well. That is what the LCM understands when we push it over. And that's the next step, pushing it over. We can run a start DSC configuration, reference the path. Again, if there were more MOFs in there targeting other machines, they would all go in this one push. We're gonna wait for it and use the verbose flag here so we can actually see it happen. We'll see each one of these components happen here in PowerShell. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this selection. That took a grand total of 75 seconds to complete. Just over a minute. And if you scroll up and look at the output here, you can actually see which resource it was working with. So here's where it installed the web server role. Scroll down a little further here. Here's where it installed the web management service role. Scroll down a little further. You can see this is where it modified the registry. And then scroll down a little further. Here's where it was working with that service, setting the startup type here to automatic. Let's run a couple of tests here. First, 
let's make sure that IS is serving up the default web page. So let's open up a browser, browse over there to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash web dash nug, and hey, look at that, IIS is running, excellent. Let's fire up server manager here, drop down the tools menu, open up IIS manager, which I already have installed on our DC nug machine here, and see if we can remotely administer that web server. So I'm gonna drop down the connections menu here, choose connect to a server, type in web dash nug, Hit next, let's supply some credentials here, administrator using our standard lab password. Hit next, and, and, oh, that's a good sign. Hit connect, supply it with the name, and look at that. Everything worked, beautiful. And there is that default website. All right, let's head back to the integrated scripting environment, and let's get a session going over on our WebNug machine. So place your cursor right on that line, hit run selection, and there we go, we are now on WebNug. Now, we could run another get Windows feature and pipe it over to the where object if you just want to see all the installed components. Again, that'll just prove that indeed the management service is installed as well as uh, the IIS and its default components. Now, what we're really going to do here is take a peek at the LCM. Let's look at all the properties here for the LCM on that machine. Notice uh, one of the big ones here is refresh mode. This is obviously going to be either push or pull, and we're set up in a push configuration right now. If we scroll up a little further here, we're also going to notice this configuration mode, apply and monitor. There's actually three modes here. There's apply only, which will just apply our configuration. There's apply and monitor. What this will do is it will apply our configuration and it will also, based on this uh, refresh mode interval here, actually relook at the machine and our configuration. And if, it, if there's anything out of state, again, maybe that registry key got changed or the service was stopped or something happened that took our machine out of its desired state, monitor means it will log it. It will log it to the event log. We can also set this to apply and autocorrect. If that machine ever drifts out of its desired state, it'll put it back into the state that's defined in our configuration on that machine. Pretty neat stuff. And I'll show you how we can change the properties of the LCM on these machines here shortly. Now, as we scroll down a little bit here, we can also view the current configuration status. Get DSE configuration status will show us the last time it was started, what our mode was, if it required a reboot, and the number of resources that were changed. And this is a very handy one here, test DSE configuration. This will test configuration drift. If this comes back as true, it means we are compliant. We are in the desired state. If this comes back as false, it means we're no longer in that desired state. Now let's exit out of the session for a moment. Let me show you how we can configure the LCM. I'm gonna scroll back up and we're just gonna pop this right into this configuration. We could create your own configuration just for the LCM, but it's rather convenient just to pop in an LCM resource block right in here. I'm gonna add it right here at the top. And there it is. You define a local configuration manager block here, and then all of those properties that we were looking at over at the LCM on WebNug, we can configure. So here we're gonna change the configuration mode over from apply and monitor to apply and autocorrect. That way, if we ever drift out of our desired state, every 15 minutes here, it will check and put it back. If it's out of that desired state, it'll compare its current configuration to that inside of the local MOF file. And again, if there's any discrepancies, it will autocorrect it. Configuration mode frequency, by the way, in minutes, this is a hard-coded minimum, so you'll never be able to go below 15 minutes. And then just to show you here, you can also specify your refresh mode, push is the default, so this won't change anything. But now all we need to do is put this entire block back into memory. So I'm gonna highlight this whole thing once again, hit run selection, there we go, it's back in memory. And now we need to regenerate that MOF file. So we'll place our cursor on that line there, run it, and then we'll push it back over to our WebNug machine. See how fast that went? Three seconds. Item potent is what that was. It didn't touch any of those other configurations because they were already in the desired state. The only thing it needed to change with that push was the LCM. All right, let's enter into another session over on WebNug. So we'll place our cursor right on that line, run our selection. Cool, now we are on our WebNug machine. We should still be in the desired state, right? Because we didn't change anything. So if we just run a quick test DSC configuration, this should return the result of true. But what if we were to stop the service, the web management service? Let's try it, let's do a stop service and let's pass in WMSVC, that's the web management service. So if we stop this, we are now out of the desired state. So now if we run test DSC configuration, 
this should return false. And look at that. And if we waited 15 minutes, it will restart that service. And I did just that, by the way. It's been roughly 17 minutes since I ran this last command. So that service should be started. In fact, just to test it out here, I'm going to run a get service. And let's just take a quick peek here at WMSVC. It should now be running. Look at that. It's DSC, the LCM on that machine, started it back up. And if we run a test DSC configuration one more time, it will return true.